For 40 years, the MG Player of the Year Award has showcased incredible talent in this region. The award itself is a success story that began by then MJ staff member David D. Fay in 1976 and has grown into the most coveted honor in Met Area Amateur Golf. Past recipients of this award include some of the nation's best players, people like Dick Sideroff, George Zeringer, Jeff Thomas, and the award's namesake, Jerry Corville Sr. In recent years, the names have been no less impressive, including the likes of Cameron Young, David Pastor, Mike Miller, Joe Saladino, just to name a few. And tonight, it is my distinct honor to welcome Stuart Hagestad to this celebrated list. My introduction came two years ago when I received an email from a mutual friend in our 2013 MGA Player of the Year, Max Buckley, subject read, reaching out. In the email, he mentioned that a friend from high school just moved to the city, loved competitive golf, and suggested we connect. I welcome these type of referrals, so we quickly jumped on a call, reviewed the Met area playing landscape, and it was apparent from our call that Stu was a gifted player motivated to test his talents against the Met Area's best. And by the way, I looked up his index, and he was a plus 6.2. <laughs> the newer boys, the newer boys have some work ahead of them. So as a fan of amateur golf, I was eager to see how this West Coast kid from USC would fair against our boys. Fast forward a season later, stewing countless high finishes and local leaderboards, so it wasn't until the Met Am that we witnessed something special. The country club of Fairfield's beautiful wing style, Seth Rayner designed course, clearly fit Stu's out. Day one on site qualifying, Stu shot 15 under, 36 hole total, earning medalist honors by 10 strokes, breaking multiple MGA records, five including the largest margin of medalist, a record that stood since 1910. His day, 6 o'clock in the park, 16 birdies, 35 screens in regulation, and two bogeys. And Stu, I don't think I ever think of that 61. The heat that I got for that brother, oh, brutal, brutal. So what do you think that Stu did that evening? Right, what would we do to celebrate? Well, Stu went right to the putting green with his caddy and companion, John Doherty, and practiced until dusk, always focused and committed on improving his skills. I think it had to do with the three-putt bogey, too, that he just couldn't let go from the round of 61. Three days later, 91 holes later, Stu was crowned the 114th Met Amateur Champion, and the Met area now knew his name. His next introduction was to the nation at Stonewall at Alperson, Pennsylvania during his first U.S. mid -Am championship. The finals, Stu faced a five-hole deficit with his latest 25, as late as the 25th hole and stood four down with five to play against one of the best amateurs in the country, Scott Harbour. That said, his focus and commitment never wavered. The USGA branded it the Remarkable Rally, burning 10 of his last 20 holes. And for those that saw it, arguably one of the best showcases of golf I've ever seen. Stewart is now a national champion in all that comes with it. That evening, he stayed after hours thanking members, volunteers, committee members alike, signing autographs and just relishing in the moment. My favorite story from the day came off the course. Stu had a free, his first free moment, and he checked his phone, opened it, and for the younger people in the room, it was like a Zoolander movie. He had over 400 plus texts and voicemails, congratulatory in nature. The best one was from a, a good friend, Ben Frazier, a man, you over there? Good out, brother. This is, this is tremendous, people. It was a screenshot from an Amex email that read, and I quote, thanks for your interest in the 2017 Masters tickets. Are you interested in a day pass for a week? Let us know, we're happy to set it up. 
Fraser's note in the text below said to Stu, are you interested? <laughs> Tremendous, my man. Stu responded, priceless. A picture of Holly Sanders presenting him the mid am trophy and the note under it, and he said, I'm covered. <laughs> On that note, I'd like to draw your attention to the TVs where we have a highlight video commemorating Stu's season. And Fraser, pay attention, it ends well. <laughs> a pleasure to introduce 2016 Jerry Corbell, Player of the Year, Stuart Henderson. Staff members at both Golf and Body and Deepdale, they couldn't be here tonight, but I know it's supported and I need to thank them as well. Um, without your help and support, I simply wouldn't be standing here today. Uh, a special thank you to Tom Schiff, Ron McDougal, Kirk, Ma or Kirk Miles, uh, and Bradley Bourne at Golf and Body, to Daryl Kessner, Jeff Geschwind, Ben Holland, and the staff at Deepdale. Um, I can't thank you enough for, for allowing me to not only go out and, and, and to prepare at your immaculate facilities but also just to be able to pick your brains and to be around you guys has, has absolutely been um, so fundamental in my development, so thank you so much. To my fellow players, I thank you all for accepting me as a transplant to the Met area. Um, the MGA has such an elite reputation and the enthusiasm of the players is truly what makes such an integral part of what makes this organization so great. Um, a special mention goes out to a couple of the players that I've gotten to know in the last couple of years specifically those on the Carry Cup team last year. And uh, see if I apologize for not getting the W. I'm still bitter about that last hole at the French American. Uh, but all the players need to be recognized as well. Ethan Ng, uh, Tyler Klein, Joe Saladino, Brian Pumlein, Darren Goldstein, Trevor Randolph, Kenny Bax, uh, George Zeringer, Cameron Young. Thank God Cameron's not here, otherwise I would not be standing here. <laughs> um, it's, it's you guys that, that truly you know, are, are kind of the, the blood of, in terms of the players of the section, and um, it's, a, it's a real treat just to be out there with you guys. Lastly, uh, to my friends, Ben, Sam, Vinny, Jason, Logan, um, I know you guys are all incredibly busy with your schedules. Thank you so much for taking time out of your days. Um, can't wait to have a beer out with you guys. <laughs> Okay, to, to kind of follow up on, on, on Brian, um, 
quick story about my first experience with, uh, with the MGA. It not only helped, I'm originally, for those of you that don't know, originally from Southern California, and that phone conversation with Ryan not only helped shape my experience in the Met area, but it really also kind of helped me shape my life going forward. Um, right around the time that we had had that conversation in, in February 2015, I was seven months into my first job out of college. I was eager, I was excited. Um, I was most fired up to be in the center of the world working in real estate finance. But as many of you guys can imagine, by about the second week of February, I was craving not only just to get outside and to hit a couple golf balls, but really also to compete. Um, while I was learning a ton of work, I really enjoyed living in New York City. But as again, everyone knows, I'm, I'm a California kid at heart. Um, New York area and the Met area as a whole always have a special place in my heart. Even though it will never be home for me, for the last two and a half years, built on and off the golf course, um, being a part of the MGA has really allowed me to mature and prioritize my life and figure out just how important the game truly is to me. After college, despite not turning professional, I knew I wanted to stay involved in the game. I wasn't quite sure if this meant competing in a couple of club events or in a couple of local events or a couple of national events, but for those that, that know me, the, un the unfortunate thing about having a really addictive personality is that going out to, to make a couple of birdies on the weekend when you're fighting off the eight extra cocktails you shouldn't have had the night before, it just, it just doesn't make a lot of sense. As Brian kind of mentioned, it requires a lot of focus and commitment, and um, I've, I've been very, very lucky to, to have surrounded myself with such great players in the area to really to push me to want to excel, so I thank them all for that. Um, Thinking back to that first conversation, I really wanted to get involved in any way that I could. Uh, Brian and I spoke for close to 30 minutes, and he kind of ran me through the, the 2015 tournament, the 2015 tournament schedule. Um, so this is dating back to last year. So we had a pretty elite uh, group of events last year. You know, so so please tell me about you know what the MGA, what you guys have lined up. It's like well, three majors. We have the Ivy Fryer set. We have the, we have the Met Am at Baltus Hall. And you have the Met Open at Wingfoot. So, yeah, let's get involved. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. So, but um, tournament accomplishments and individual achievements aside, I feel that I speak for the players and I express just how privileged we really are to be members of the MGA. Um, obviously, the MGA has been extremely fortunate to have so many amazing relationships with historic and, and, and prestigious clubs in the area, but look, you can't simply measure it's just the quality of people within their organization. Um, ever since my first tournament experience at the Ike last year, it's been clear to me that the MGA absolutely sets the standard in not just how to organize and to run golf tournaments, but really how to recognize and recruit those best individuals for the job. Um, when you look at the tournament side of it, which is obviously where I spend most of my time, you look at the players and the volunteers, and really the general enthusiasm that's held for the section, it's really those bonds and those friendships when I resonate on my time um, in the last two and a half years. That is truly what's going to really stick out to me and what I'm going to remember going forward. So there's one last person that I, I haven't mentioned. Um, he's a very instrumental person in this room. Um, he's literally been with me for, for every step of my success on the golf course in the last six months. I, absolutely wouldn't be standing here today um, if it wasn't for him. And every single person that's ever played an MGA event or staff member that's ever had part of the event knows exactly who this is. So not to, not to embarrass him too much, but a couple of the experiences that he has that was vital to my experience in the last six months. He's been a part of 57 MGA majors, 60 NG, or NJ SGA majors, eight international team matches. He's won one Ike. Three pub links championships, two Met Ams, 59 USGA events, 14 medalist qualifiers, one US Am semifinal, two US Mid Am semifinals, finals of the US pub links, and one Mid Am title. While I feel, well, excuse me, while I feel honored and humbled to be a part of this special night, I'm certain that I would not be standing here today without this help. Over the course of my competitive career, I've always stressed that any degree of success is always a team effort. When you have someone on the back, let alone someone you trust, it's not just the individual that competes, rather it's a team. I have a special token of my appreciation that I would like to present, and I would appreciate it if everyone in this room could please stand and applaud his efforts. John Dillard.
everyone wants to, I know everyone wants to eat, so I'm going to make this brief. But um, there's two more people I'd have to thank. I promise I'll, I'll sum this up quickly. Unfortunately, while they can't be here tonight, um, I want to thank my parents. Without the love and support of my two biggest cheerleaders, I, I simply would not be the person that I am today. Um, it's strange how, as you get older, you begin to realize just what an integral part of your life your parents truly are. At 25, I'm, I'm still at the age where I consider it a huge accomplishment if I make my bed before I leave my apartment. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that my parents were able to raise four kids, put us through school, work, seemingly made every golf tournament, and I have three siblings, so made all of their sports events as well. It's, it's really just unbelievable, and, and it's frankly unfathomable. They're my role models, and they have set the standard of the quality of person that I aspire to be, and there's no amount of gratitude and appreciation that I can express that is remotely close to be adequate to truly thank them for their presence in my life. Thank you to my mom and dad, and I love you dearly. here tonight to celebrate Jimmy Roberts, myself, and the MGA's 2016 season. It is an honor and a privilege to be the 2016 MGA Jerry Corbill Senior Player of the Year. I wish everyone the best in the upcoming Holloway season. I look forward to seeing you all in 2017. Thank you. God bless. Congratulations on a truly remarkable year. We all look forward to following the great interest to your brilliant golf career as it continues with the Masters in April and hopefully a well earned spot on our Worker Cup team in the fall. Diana, we're not lobbying. Well, maybe we are. <laughs> Stewart will be a wonderful addition to the team at LA Country Club. Stewart, you do the man on your crowd. Before you sit down, we have one more presentation to make. With help from our friends at Vineyard Vines, we are delighted to present another special gift to the young tradition. We'd like to ask Brian to help with the presentation of the MGA Player of the Year placement.